What's up, Mario from OageFab. Today's video, I'm gonna be doing some aluminium TIG welding and uh, just gonna do like a bit of a run through of like the setup that I use, all the things that I use and a few tips and tricks that I've learned over the years just to make things a little bit easier. This is just how I do it. There's uh, loads of good um, videos and stuff uh, on YouTube and uh, my advice whenever you want to learn anything is to learn the same thing from as many different people as possible and just take the best bits of, from everyone and then you know mix a bit of your own stuff in with that and and you should be good uh, but this is just this is just how I do it so anyway um, <clears throat> these are some drain uh, things for some air conditioning units. This is a job I'm just helping a, a mate out with these. Uh, he's got a lot on at the minute and um, he's got loads of these to do so I said I'd, I'd weld a few of them up for him. Uh, he's always helping me out so I'm just repaying the favour. But um, all we've got to do is two of these need to be extended because uh, his folder will only fold this length so uh, we've got to weld two ends on to these two this one has a channel that sits in there so we've just got to weld, weld that in and then they've all got to be capped off uh, just capped off either end. This is all plasma cut, so we need to whip round, clean all the edges up. So I'll show you what I'm gonna use for uh, doing all that. And then we'll look at like, set up on the machine and then just a few little tips to, to make life easier for yourself. All right, so um, for cleaning everything up, I'm gonna be using these. This is just a Scotch Bright grinder pad, and um, I'm sure there's going to be people say that you shouldn't use that, but that's what I'm going to use. Um, I've got a file that's only ever been used on aluminium, uh, little aluminium uh, stainless wire brush, and all that sort of thing, but. For this, I'll literally just whiz over it with that, wipe it down with a bit of uh, acetone just to remove any like grease or oil or anything, and then just weld it up. Um, so that's what I'll do for that. And then when it comes to the welding, um, my TIG torch setup is a, I've got a gas, uh, a short gas lens kit with a 2.4 tungsten, and I use these are super super six blue tip. There's white tips in there, but they're not. What comes in there? These are. Oh shit. These are a blue tip tungsten. 2.4. Lanthanated blue tip, and I use these for everything. So I only use one tungsten. I have just picked up these, which are uh, Benzel 2.4. These are a multi purpose tungsten 3 in 1 as well. But these are what I've used for the past few years and only ever used these. Um, <coughs> And so it just means I've just got one tungsten and then I have one torch set up and the only thing I ever change is if I'm doing alley I will run the smaller gas lens cut. I think that's a uh, I think that's a six and then I will just if I'm doing something that needs a bit more gas coverage um, you know, some stainless or something. 
I'll put that on, which is just the biggest one I've got. And I've got a seven as well. Oops. I've got a seven. And those, those pretty much, like everything I do, I just do with that. So I've just got one torch. Keep it simple. I, I had a load of the glass cups and just, you know, they get broken. And to be honest, I like to just keep things as simple as possible. And um, you don't need to have all that stuff. You know, you can get by with a, with a simple setup and not have to keep swapping, swapping stuff around. So 2.4 uh, tungsten. I do alley with that, stainless exhaust with that, um, you know, some thicker steel stuff with it if I need to. Um, you can just sharpen it to more of a point, you know, the, so if I'm doing like an exhaust, I just sharpen it to more of a taper, you know, and then it, it gives the effect of, of, of a smaller tungsten. So I have a little run through settings on the machine and then uh, do some welding. Right, so this is uh, my machine, and um, obviously we're set to AC I'm using a foot pedal. Um, that's pre gas flow. So I've just got it set to max, so the pedal with the pedal all the way down is maxed out, and then obviously. Um, you can just use whatever you need and then the only two uh, functions that really need adjusting other than that is the Hertz got that set to 120 sort of anywhere between 100 and 120 is where I find uh, is good 120 just gives you a little bit more precision uh, like I find it helps getting tacks on and stuff like that basically the with the Hertz the, the higher up you go the more pinpointed the arc will be um, and the lower you go like the more sort of fanned out it will be but um, that's good for just sort of all round and then the other one this is the, the AC balance or like this is known as like the cleaning action this is probably the most um, important one really to set and uh, this is set to minus 10 which is only really relevant to this machine but basically the the um, the cleaning action, if you've just got like a dial to turn it up and down, the higher you have it, the more cleaning action you get, but the more your tungsten will just start to erode as you're welding. So what I do is I set it to, I set it to sort of as high as I can get away with it, where I get a nice clean puddle, um, and it welds nice, but it'll still maintain like, it will still keep a ball on the end of the tungsten. I can get it to focus on it. So I don't know if you can see that at all, but that's a tapered, I've got a taper ground on the tungsten and it's just, it's able to maintain that little ball and it stays like that. And if I duff the tungsten, I can put a sharpened one straight in and it will ball up to the exact same ball with the cleaning action set how it is there. So that's basically what I do. I just set it and so that the weld puddle's clean and it will ma maintain that, like the type of ball that you want on the end of your tungsten. That way you, d you don't actually, I never ball up my tungstens. It just does it by itself. Um, and then I just leave leave it at that so the way to find that setting would be um, keep turning it up until you can see it you'll see it your tungsten will start to melt back and it will ball up bigger and bigger and then just sort of tone that down a little bit until you find that sweet spot where you can maintain uh, 
maintain a, a, like a decent tungsten and still get a nice clean well puddle um, obviously the, the cleaner you have all the material you know you can you can run less cleaning action and have less of that sort of white bead that runs either side of the uh, weld but what I do is just just find that one one sort of spot and just leave it there to do um, and just leave it at that just to keep it simple so that's that's it for settings on there Okay, a couple of tips then. First one is if you've just bought a TIG welder, it's going to come with one of the massive torches with um, the button on it, uh, just like the, the big cheap torches that you get with almost all TIG welders, and then you have this really big, heavy, thick uh, cable connected to it and trying to weld with those is much more difficult than trying to weld with one of these smaller ones. Once you've got a torch this sort of size you, you can hold it uh, much easier and this is this is actually quite um, quite a tough lead you can get you can get really soft flexible hoses which I've been meaning to get myself one for ages and it just means that the torch is much easier to to maneuver around that's the key to to doing it really you need it's, it's such small precise movements that by having like a big heavy torch you just you're making things difficult for yourself from the start and I honestly struggle to weld with those big heavy torches once you get used to one of these because it's just so much easier the other thing is this the head of this can flex so instead of like instead of if I was doing this outside edge here instead of positioning my hand or trying to float my hand to get that angle I can just bend the edge of the torch round and just rest my hand flat you're just taking the, the strain out of your wrist trying to hold it in an awkward position because you can just you can just move the torch to whatever angle you need it so <clears throat> a small torch with a flex head will make your whole life a million times easier get yourself one of them see if you can find one of these real flexy hoses as well that um, I'm looking to get and that will will help you out so I'm just going to get this tacked up now All right, so a couple of things I forgot to mention. Um, the size of the torch is a 17, and it's an air-cooled torch. You can get smaller, smaller torches than that, but generally they're going to be like water-cooled. Otherwise, you can't use them um, up to very high uh, amps. So I've got a 200 amp machine, so 17 is is uh, the sort of size air-cooled torch you're going to want for that. Um, the gas flow that I'm running is probably about 12 CFH and I just run as low as I can get away with just to save on gas and then I do the same with the post flow which is how long the gas flows for after you finish welding and that's just to cool the tungsten and uh, generally just you want to run as much as it takes to keep the tungsten silver if it's going all purpley and different colours you want to run a little bit more but I'm probably at like three or four seconds something like that yeah just getting this uh, getting these end pieces tacked up which keep falling off there so I'm just using a little bit of masking tape just to hold it in place and then uh, get a couple tacks on get the masking tape off before the heat gets into it and the glue comes off the tape but it's just a little trick for holding something if you 
I've got no way of holding it. Obviously, you can't use magnets and stuff with um, aluminium. So this is uh, the the first little weld I did. It was pretty obvious that I hadn't cleaned that plasma cut edge off um, nearly well enough. I tried going over it with a wire brush, but um, yeah, I should have really filed the edge clean before I started welding it. And there was a lot of you could see a lot of like scum floating around in the puddle, and um, like you get this kind of like the the filler seems to sort of stick to the puddle and hang off the end of the filler rod. Um, so I was getting some of that going on uh, in the areas where I just I didn't clean it very well. You can see a little bit of like the, where the filler rod's sticking to the end of that there on the corner. I don't know if you can see that. And uh, I duffed the tungsten there, so that's the first tungsten change. And then I did it about three times in a row. So did it again there. But sometimes, sometimes you can do it and uh, get away with it. And if the tungsten still looks all right, then you can usually just keep on going. But if you really sort of duff it in there properly, you can like it kind of explodes the tungsten a little bit and that's when you gotta take it out and re-grind it but I did I hit the tungsten three times there in a pretty short space of time but that's just uh, seems to be the case when um, you know, I haven't done it for a little while and then get a job in uh, the first first bit of welding always uh, takes a bit of while to get your hands sort of steady but I've got the uh, I've got a TIG finger I'm using there just to protect my hands from the heat and um, helps helps you sort of slide your hand around on the alley um, and you can see I've got the, the torch end of the torch like kinked over there so just making use of the flex head torch. And uh, I do quite a lot of sort of stop and starts rather than trying to slide my hand all the way along and do a long run. Uh, I find it easier to pivot my hand rather than slide it. And then uh, this is just a real time uh, well just to give you the, the sort of like so you can see the speed that I'm actually welding it at. It's definitely nice having the uh, air fed helmet so you've got nice fresh air blowing in your face instead of breathing in all the uh, fumes from it. You can kind of see there I'm, I'm actually like rotating my wrist rather than sliding it all the way along it's just kind of personal preference I find it easier to keep a steady hand doing it that way and then uh, on that one I just started from the middle so that um, just to stop me from having to do another tack really stop things moving around and I'm not overly worried as to what these welds come out looking like they don't need to look perfect because most of them are going to be um, sanded off anyway. And this is the last last little piece going in now, this little uh, channel and um, yeah again it's really didn't clean it well enough at all so you can learn from uh, my mistakes on that if you've got a plasma cut edge you need to 
need to really get it, get all the uh, plasma cut sort of surface gone before you try and weld it. I'm just trying to fill a little gap up there on that corner. Um, and that's just a case of sort of building the edges up a little bit as you move along until you can fill it all in. Um, yeah, I think that is... Uh, I think that's it, yeah, no, just these last two, two more welds along here and then that's, um, that's this job done. So I forgot my, forgot my TIG finger there and my hand was uh, burning that pretty quick. So this, that's the finished trays, just, uh, Put some water in them. Left it left it in there for a while just to check that there was nothing leaking out. They're only holding water, so it's a good enough test just to make sure that they're um, going to do their job. So yeah, that's going to be it for this little job. Cheers for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.